makes all Wales kick off their Under Armour series with a convincing win over Scotland. This week you can be sure the atmosphere will be livelier, the challenge undoubtedly tougher, as Warren Gatlin's men welcome the Wallabies to town. and looks on as his Wales take on Australia. The crowd says it all, Wales take the lead. Gareth Davis and Davis is off. Reese Hodge covers back, Davis beats him. Excellent covering tackle by the hooker, Palotto now. Wales pour into the run. Palatau plays scrum half. Jake Ball, good dis distribution. Jonathan Davis, it's a three on one. Liam Williams, Lee Halfpenny, Steph Evans, he's over and grabs the ball. That's a brilliant try by Wales. What a tackle that is. He's away. Beale comes away with it. Everybody went with the dummy ball. the chase and pick up driven against the touchline it's had a little bit of everything this game it's been a little cracker Wales 21 Australia 29 halfway line a pretty spectacular view of the pitch behind me and two pretty spectacular guests alongside me Sam Warburton Wales's most successful captain and a man who's been capped more than 60 times for the Wallabies James Horwell thank you for your time gentlemen Sam you've achieved so much in your career that abiding memory of the Lions winning test series down under but you never managed it with Wales what made them such a tough nut to crack James has been a thorn in my backside throughout my career um, uh, Australia is weird, they're just a bogey team for Wales for the last, well since 2008, so 10 years now. I remember the, the really painful ones in 2012, we toured their three test tour and over the three games I think it was a five point difference in total. So that was a really tough tour to come home from with absolutely nothing. But, um, but I, I said before, you, you don't get unlucky 13 times in a row by by chance, you know, Australia have obviously been that little bit better than we have. So, um, you know, people have talked about the statistics now that Australia have lost a few games this year, but you can't forget the, the opposition that they're playing. You know, it is different to the Northern Hemisphere. They're playing relentlessly good sides week in, week out. So, you know, I still watch Australia and still think they're a top outfit. And it's going to be one of Wales' tough, toughest challenges this season. And James, it's a completely different story for you. You've never lost against Wales. Do you foresee another win for your countryman tonight? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you know while we haven't had the greatest of years statistically, you know, and you know we've uh, we've lost a lot of games and there's a lot of pressure on the boys. I think the last outing they had against the All Blacks, while they didn't win, they probably played some of the best rugby they've played all year. And I, I think this tour is a chance for guys to get away from sort of the bubble of rugby in Australia and get out and probably enjoy themselves a bit more. And I think that's why we've been so successful playing here in in Cardiff. Is the boys really enjoy playing against Wales, enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the stadium, enjoy the week. And so I think that sort of transfers onto the pitch on a, on a Saturday afternoon. I want to ask you quickly about team selection, Sam. A few surprises, perhaps Josh Adams in instead of Liam Williams, Adam Beard in the second row. Probably if it was a World Cup final, we'd see Liam playing. But Gatlin said he wants to reward the boys who last wore that jersey. If I was a, a director of rugby now, and I had the budget to sign any player I wanted, I'd probably sign Israel Folau. And um, so for Josh Adams to go up against him is a brilliant contest. And similarly with Josh Adams and Folau, it's the same with Adam Beard in the second row. From first impression, it might seem like the two unusual selections, but with prep now to World Cup, they're guys which 
if, if Wales had the injuries they had in 2015, they could be guys you would be relying on in, in a quarter final. So you've got to chuck them in to the cold of international rugby against the top sides like Australia. So you'd know what they're truly about. So great test for those two lads, both young guys, you know, hugely promising. And, you know, Adam Beard and Josh Adams have both played really well for Wales in the past 12 months anyway. So, you know, I'm sure this is the nice natural progression for them. I'm sure they'll do great. Let's hope so. I know you famously never had a drink as a player. Will you be having one as a fan, as a commentator tonight? I, you know, it went under the radar. I had a few as a player, but I just kept them <laughs> under wraps. But um, if Wales win, yeah, it would be quite nice to have a, a gin to I'm calling them, gin and fanta after the game. So, uh, yeah, I'd have to have one to celebrate a victory. Will you get to experience the Cardiff nightlife? No, I'm not staying down tonight, but I've, I've, uh, I've toured here a lot since 2006. So uh, I know what it's like after a match day and hopefully uh, we can see an Aussie win. Well, we'll have to wait and see. But here on WIU TV, we like to take you to places that no one else can. And for the first time, the players and the coaches give us access to the team room. We're here in Camp in the Vale, uh, in the team room. Myself being involved in the squad for a while now, it's uh, pretty, pretty much unprecedented. Um, you know, the, the look behind the scenes, as it were. As years gone by, we probably wouldn't have put this out. Um, but I think the appetite, um, for people to know what's going on behind the scenes has definitely grown without losing the mystique obviously what goes on um, you know behind the scenes in the red jersey that you know, the preparation that they can be a part of and see into um, the, the camp as it were so um, thank you very much for the support and hopefully you enjoy being with us on the journey what are you going to bring what can you bring to your game where do you gain supporting difference sets you apart from someone else potentially in your position. Because that's going to be probably the one thing that guarantees it gets you selected in the team or in the squad. You've got to have a point of difference. Think about that. And we've got it as well. Well, from the Principality Stadium to the Cardiff Arms Park, where Wales women kickstart their autumn campaign against South Africa. place the fans have chosen to kickstart their international day. What a crowd here at the Arms Park to celebrate Wales' first win of the autumn. And joining me now are the try scorers. Thank you for your time, girls. I'll start with you, Jasmine, because whenever you get your hands on the ball, being the sounds of the 15s game, it's as if something's about to happen. A decent start for you. <laughs> yeah, I think it was awesome. Like we defended so well and then when we when we kept ball we we did something with it and it was just a fantastic opportunity for us to, to come out when with a crowd like this, it's awesome. The result never really looked in doubt, but do you still feel it was a competitive start to your autumn? Oh, absolutely. Physicality. We knew they were going to bring physicality and they did for sure bring it, but we, we matched them and if not, topped them. So physicality definitely won us that game. Sean, a tired game in a head drive and I would clear all that bloodyard team in my new ward. Yeah. My game in in Hong Kong at Canada, though Canada and Wedding, we have a lot in the north, can't we? Be then you go over there to Africa and cut all heavy, and I just had a tree game. Um, when you some back when you decal with the golf heavy, some Lani Hong Kong now, no swinner, so on a bend down to Canada with with the proud, we are anno the um, medal and Wedding and a new one, a top and a pedwar top, well, a pedwar to have in a bead. A lot of my head heavy in a day, and then got said, couldn't I? But now, my best pit dark, my give it a caravan in Gavango Bull. Yeah, and that Benny got the pit and merch, um, Capcan Dunn Heavy. I mean, with a one added settler, a couple of nerves. I mean, came nothing really a clown or unheavy to have it. Um, I'm a more selection of a savage, so I'm not going to go on the plug each road game. Emma, well, congratulations, girls. I'm sure there's a bit thank more you. rugby on the agenda for you this afternoon. Enjoy tonight, absolutely. Good thank good you very much. Yeah. All right, guys, boy, just want to welcome you to the stadium to watch a proper, proper sport, you know, a real man do wear red not yellow, not my words. Just want to say huge congratulations from myself and the whole squad. Uh, what you achieved is huge, you know. I'm sure myself and the boys and all the people in the stadium today uh, are glad to have you here. You're quite clearly enjoying the fruits of your labour on the beer and food. So enjoy the game and I'll catch you after. Geraint, I think it would be underestimating it to say you more than deserve a beer after what's been a remarkable year. Has it started to sink in yet? Um, not really, to be honest. I think... Uh it's just been one thing after the next at the minute, but I think maybe when I get back to actually 
riding my bike and yeah. it all settles down and reflect on it a bit but it's just been amazing everything I've done really obviously the homecoming in Cardiff really stands out but um, yeah it's just incredible. You're a big rugby fan can you offer us your expert opinion on how you see this panning out? Well, I, you know, we're too good to lose 14 in a row, aren't we? So it's going to happen. It's got to happen. You know, the boys are, you know, I know George quite well and I know he tries to give me a bit of stick, but, you know, it's, it's, it's see how hard they work. And, uh, you know, as athletes, you know, we have that mutual respect and, uh, yeah, we'll be cheering them on all the way. For Enjoy. Sure. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks a lot. The boys will be hoping to create their own history today, but what are they like at commentating on classic matches? We asked some of the players to commentate on a try, which current team manager Alan Phillips, otherwise known as Thumper, had a big part to play in. That is a world class. That is a brilliant finish. You may well get there. Moriarty Senior, Moriarty Junior. When was this? 1987. 87 World Cup, I reckon it says. Three mile line out, lovely. I think it's a young Alan Phillips playing Steel. hooker, yeah. Is it really? Jeez, that must have been a couple of years back. 21, the call for Alan Phillips. Who, Alan Phillips or the drum? <laughs> no. Try and set it up. Well stolen by Richard Webster. Webster still to Sutton. On goes Buchanan again. Oh, oh Bucks. Bucks. Well done. Buchanan links to Phillips. Phillips has men outside. Oh, great offload. Oh, thump. Nice inside ball. Inside, though, is Moriarty. And Paul Moriarty pulls one back. Oh, Maz's old man flying there. Oh, Paul Moriarty. Obviously, Ross has got that in his game, eh? Bit of inside trailing. Great gasp by Bucks. Great offload from Alan Phillips. But here's the vital work of Richard Webster coming in. There it is. The new cap is the man to make it, and he still clings to it. Find Sutton in support. There's the rampaging Celestine Brock Buchanan. Alan Good hands, man. Oh, they're shifting the ball, point of attack. Nice. Alan Phillips, well, he had two outside, but Paul Moriarty was quite good enough. It's all at knees, he's a nice little... Oh, that's it. Go on, Thump. Nice one on off, over. Thump is looking to slow him, right? <laughs> Paul Moriarty with a handoff under the sticks. Nice. I've said that four times, on the I've got under the sticks once. <laughs> <laughs>
congratulations. We've talked about fine margins so many times when it comes to this fixture. Today they belong to you. What a test match. Yeah, it was. It was one for the pur purists, really, wasn't it? it uh, yeah, look, I, I don't know, it was one of those games where both teams didn't really give an inch, did they? I thought they were, they were really sharp at the breakdown. We knew they were going to be with Hooper and Pocock, and we probably could have dealt with that a little bit better. But, you know, we hung in there, we hung in there, and, you know, uh, just really nice to come away with a close win against these guys. It's been a long time coming. Whatever's been said about this Australia team, it was a side packed with players who have come to Cardiff and won here many times. What will it do to the confidence in your squad? Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Whatever's been said about this Australia team, it's filled with players who have come to Cardiff and, men, and won many a time. What will it do to this team's confidence? Well, look, we believe in each other. We knew, um, you know, we know we're a hard defence to crack. Um, I still probably keep harping on. I, I still think our attack can grow, but look, we're really proud of um, of the red wall that we create here, especially in the stadium. And uh, you know, it takes a pretty tough team to crack us. And you know, we just kept fronting up. And uh, you know, we, we applied some pressure for, for periods of time. We got a few points, and you know, just to dig in that last 10 minutes and, and, and to come away with a close win. You know, they're, they're a team full of X Factor with you know Izzy out wide and. You know, some big mid midfielders in the middle. So, look, I thought we defended really heroically and uh, just really pleased that we've won this one. The crowd seems to cheer just as loudly for your defensive efforts as they do if you make a line break or score a try. Do you feel that on the pitch? Oh, look, we need them. You know, certainly when it was coming down to the wire there, you know, the boys absolutely knackered and it, it takes, you know, 80,000 of the fans to get us going. So, you know, I'm really proud of the, the, the squad effort today and, you know, glad we can, you know, show the fans we can beat the Aussies here. Huge, huge congratulations. Enjoy tonight. Cheers, thank you. We will. Josh, a few hours since the final whistle. Now you've had some time to reflect. How does it feel to gain a narrow victory over the Wallabies? Yeah, um, obviously it, uh, it was sort of a bit of a long time coming, you know, with not beating them for 13 games, I think it was. Um, right at the end there, you know, it, it literally could have gone either way. You're so close. Um, I know in the past the... Uh, the victories, uh, the margins of victories have been pretty small, so it was really nice to come out on the winning side and finally sort of get a victory over the Wallabies, yeah. The crowd have been cheering your defensive efforts just as much as they have, you know, your line breaks, your tries. How does it feel to be part of that on the pitch? In all fairness to the crowd, they're electric today. Um, just like to mention, when Biggs put that uh, penalty over to go, was it 9-6, uh, the place exploded and, um, you know, it was... It was really really loud could hardly hear anything what the boys were saying on the pitch um, and yeah you know like you said when we sort of make a line break we can hear the cheers rise and rise as the as the play goes on and on and it does really lift us uh, as a team on the field yeah Warren Gatlin mentioned you as his man of the match in the post-match press conference given maybe some were surprised over your inclusion in the team how pleasing is it to come out of that with with him sort of pinpointing you at the end yeah, it's obviously really nice to know that he, you know, he thought I had a good game, um, and it was sort of just trying to justify the selection um, f for today. Um, I know I was really grateful to be given the opportunity, and I just wanted to sort of like repay the coaches in uh, putting a good performance on the field. Um, I think I'd done that, and you know, just looking forward now to try and finish this autumn season beaten, and uh, that'll be a good result for us. Yeah, because you're seven wins on the trot. Surely that's the main aim, the main message that you do go unbeaten in this autumn for the first time. Yeah, well, obviously that's that, that's definitely a goal. Um, we got Tonga and South Africa to go. Really, two uh, tough, tough two games. Um, you know, our advantage is actually playing a home year in uh, in Cardiff. Um, and if we can get anything close to um, the capacity and the fans make the noise like they've done today, and they continue to do in the background. <laughs> yeah, um, you know. I, the, 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 there's no reason why um, we can't finish this series and beat them. I think our preparation leading into this Australia game has been really good um, and we practised what we put on the field today and I think that showed, especially defensively. Um, Australia were really good in attack, you know, they got some dangerous runners uh, but I thought as a, as, a, as a team we dealt with them uh, really well and like I said, it was, it was really nice and a sort of bit of a relief to come out on the winning side at the end there. Josh, I'm not going to hold up your celebrations any longer. Enjoy tonight and a massive congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, what a fantastic win for Wales and an incredible day here at the Principality Stadium.
With it being Remembrance Sunday, we now pay tribute to one of the most influential Welshmen of the 20th century, whose acts of valour earned him the Victoria Cross during the Second World War. Former WRU President Sir Tasker Watkins would have been 100 years old this month. In Northwest Europe, on the evening of the 16th of August 1944, Lieutenant Watkins was commanding a company of the Welsh Regiment. The battalion was ordered to attack objectives near the railway at Bar 4. His company had to cross open cornfields in which booby traps had been set. It was not yet dusk, and the company soon came under heavy machine gun fire from posts in the corn and farther back, and also fire from an 88mm gun. Many casualties were caused and the advance was slowed up. Lieutenant Watkins, the only officer left, placed himself at the head of his men and under short range fire, charged two posts in succession, personally killing or wounding the occupants with his Sten gun. On reaching his objective, he found an anti-tank gun manned by a German soldier. His Sten gun jammed, so he threw it in the German's face and shot him with his pistol before he had time to recover. Lieutenant Watkins' company now had only some 30 men left and was counter-attacked by 50 enemy infantry. Lieutenant Watkins directed the fire off his men and led a bayonet charge, which resulted in the almost complete destruction of the enemy. It was now dusk and orders were given for the battalion to withdraw. These orders were not received by Lieutenant Watkins' company as the wireless set had been destroyed. They now found themselves alone and surrounded in depleted numbers in a falling light. Lieutenant Watkins decided to rejoin the battalion by passing round the flank of the enemy position through which he had advanced. But while passing through the cornfield once more, he was challenged by an enemy post at close range. He ordered his men to scatter and himself charged the post with a Brent gun and silenced it. He then led the remnants of his company back to battalion headquarters. His superb gallantry and total disregard for his own safety during an extremely difficult period were responsible for saving the lives of his men and had a decisive influence on the course of the battle. <laughs>